Merry Christmas! Welcome to worship on Christmas Eve at First Presbyterian Church in Lafayette, Louisiana, a place where all are welcome to explore, experience, and express God's love together. On this night, we are gathered so that we might worship together online. At the same time, there will be people worshiping uh, in the parking lot at the church because we're doing our best to take care of each other and to create a public witness that says that God loves you. So thank you for being a part of that public witness by worshiping with us tonight. I also want to uh, give thanks to those who are assisting in this service, particularly um, in, the, uh, in the service that, that's in the parking lot. We have um, Allison Brandon, that is our soloist, and also here we have Sasha Massey, who has joined us to uh, help lead us in worship. So we give thanks to God for them and their efforts as well as all the others who are who are involved in making this all come together. Uh, you see the poinsettias that are behind me, and I want you to know that they were uh, given in honor of uh, people who we love that are maybe were separated from during this time, and also in memory of people who have joined the church triumphant, who have passed on, who we think of especially, especially fondly at Christmas time. Uh, so if you want to uh, be a part of that witness, you're welcome to continue to, um, to give to that in the church, and those names will be shared with church members. Uh, but I want you to know that those, those uh, poinsettias are here in, in honor and in memory, and uh, the names for which they have been given will be shared with the congregation as well uh, in the coming weeks. Um, next Sunday, we'll be led in worship by a Ukirk Fellowship group out of um, Greensboro, North Carolina. And uh, Ukirk is a college campus ministry of the Presbyterian Church USA that supports and networks college campus ministries all over the country, even the Wesley United campus ministry that we're a part of here in, uh, in, at University of, Louis Laf <laughs> University of Louisiana at Lafayette. Um, tonight we will receive Holy Communion, and uh, we will receive that uh, individually um, by intinction and uh, in your homes and here together. Um, we encourage you to get some bread and some juice and come join us to consider the table at your house an extension of the table of Christ as we consecrate the elements together as we become made one through Holy Communion uh, in, in the love and fellowship of Jesus Christ. And now let us uh, begin our worship as we come together on this most holy of nights in celebration of uh, the birth of Jesus and the gift that God has given us for our salvation and for our freedom from sin and death, not only in life to come, but in the life that we live here and now together. Let us worship God.
Let the lighting of these candles be a sign of the coming light of Christ. We light this candle for hope. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let all creation sing for joy at the coming of the Lord. The Lord of hosts is coming to restore us. God's face will shine and we will be saved. We light this candle for peace. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. We light this candle for joy. When the Lord restores our lives, we will be like those who dream, those who sow in tears and reap with shouts of joy. We light this candle for love. We will sing of God's steadfast love forever. We will proclaim the faithfulness of the Lord to all generations. We light this candle in celebration of the advent of Christ. Sing the Lord a new song, for God has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. On each occasion, the lighting of the candles is concluded with, Light dawns for the righteous, and joy to the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord. Give thanks to God's holy name. Receive the call to worship that has been used for centuries in the Orthodox Christian Church and by many who follow the way of Jesus as well in celebration of the birth of Christ. Christ is born, give him glory. Christ has come down from heaven, receive him. Christ is now on earth, exalt him. O oh, you earth, sing to the Lord. O oh, you nations, praise him in joy, for he has been glorified. Now let us turn to God's word. Our scripture readings are familiar and wonderful. They include promises and stories. Listen now as a child might listen, full of expectation and awe, for this is not just an ancient story. It is our story here and now today. First, I will read from Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2 and then Luke chapter 2 verses 1 through 14. Listen, for this is God's word, and we are God's people. The peop this is Isaiah 9, 2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 14. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy 
for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in a band of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God indeed. Uh, how we love to hear that story. Whether it's from someone we love and trust like Dorinda or someone with the childlike confidence of Linus or the reassuring authority of our moms and little ones in our annual Christmas pageant that we did this year. We love to hear the story of the nativity of Jesus. For those who are young, it's only second nature to hear a, a story that's so beloved and say, oh, again, read it again, Dad. But for those of us who have grown up or grown old, or at least think that we may have somehow accidentally grown up or grown old without intending to, this story, the story of the birth of Jesus, brings us back to our natural state of wonder, like no other story ever can or will. Now, some will hear it, and they may think, like the Grinch, maybe there is something more to the meaning of Christmas that I had not heard before. Most of us probably think we already know the meaning of Christmas pretty well, but we, we all still need the feeling of reassurance that this story brings. We need the anchoring of it, the centering of it, the, the grounding force of the story of the birth of Jesus in a world that seems to want to tear itself apart over things that just won't even matter in a, another year or two or, or ten or fifty Still, we tell the story of the nativity of Jesus because this story matters. It matters to us. It matters to the world. And I dare say that it matters to God that we tell the story of the birth of Jesus. It matters that we tell the story and that we light candles for hope and peace and joy and love and, and finally for the advent of Christ. Now, some of you may have heard that in the lighting of the Advent wreath and thought, wait a minute, the, the Advent of Christ? I thought this was Christmas Eve. Why are, we, why are we back in Advent all of a sudden? Well, that's because the word Advent has kind of a, a double meaning. It, it means coming. We're waiting for this thing. It's coming. It's happening. But it also means arriving. The Advent of Christ means that we remember that the Christ, God's anointed, chosen one, the Christ has come into the world to reveal what it is like to know God and to live in God's love. And when we think of it that way, we realize that, the, that when we light these candles and we tell this story, the, the whole story, all of it, that we're not just talking about something that happened ages ago in Bethlehem. We're talking about something that is, is happening right here, right now. The push and pull of political leaders and power mongers that happened at the time of the birth of Jesus is still happening today. The rejection of those in need is still happening today. The presence of God bursting forth all tender and squalling like a real baby, that's still happening today too, right in the midst of our messy lives. Thanks be to God that we have the story of the birth of Jesus, complete with Caesars and shepherds and angels proclaiming the advent of Christ. Angels proclaiming the advent of Christ with voices so powerful that they rend the sky and so tender that they repair the souls of all who hear and are willing to say, let us go and see what this is all about. Now, of course, this year we are also encouraged by the idea of planets moving and stars appearing for wise people to follow and find the light of Christ once more. Not only that, but we have been encouraged by the knowledge that the light that we shared this night, literally the light in each candle here, 
was lit from a light that was lit from a light, that one, that was lit from a light that was lit from a light that, well, it spans its way all the way across our presbytery, all the way across our nation, all the way across the world, and began with a candle in the grotto of the Nativity, the place that many believe to be the actual birthplace of Jesus. It is this Jesus who calls himself the truth, the light, and the way. So whether you are worshiping with us on this holy night in the parking lot or in your home online, it is the light of the advent of Christ that we bear together. And this year, perhaps more than most, I am aware of how precious it is to bear a light. Because I've been tending that flame for about a week since I got it from the Presbytery office in Baton Rouge. I made special arrangements to travel with it. I've gotten up in the middle of the night to feed it and keep it healthy. (laughs) I've changed it from candle to candle. Much like caring for a child, I've rearranged some of my priorities around its well-being. Unlike a child, or or maybe, maybe not so much unlike a child, this flame is more than just a flame. It is something that stands for something greater. It is something that we must care for together, even as we must care for it on our own. But the light is not just something that we care for. It, in its own way, it cares for us as well. In truth, this light bears us as much as we bear it, for this is the light of God's love. It cannot be extinguished it can only be revealed. And God chose to reveal God's love through the innocence and vulnerability of a child so that we might know, so that we might know that God has chosen to be revealed in our brokenness and chaos too. And here's the good news in all this. If that wasn't good enough, here's the good news in all of this. Even in a year where we have been limited by things that we cannot control, by the decisions of others, by a public health crisis that seems unending, God's love for you is without end. That is why at the close of this terribly difficult year, we come to the table of Christ to be reminded and reassured of God's love. And we light candles for hope, peace, joy, love, and most especially to celebrate the advent of Christ. Now, as we approach this table in faith, I want to encourage you. Because Caesars is still going to try to seize that power. Hardened hearts are still going to reject those who are vulnerable. And sometimes it's me, sometimes it's you who have a hard heart or who are vulnerable. But God is still going to enter in and make all things new. So thanks be to God that we have one another to bear this light together. As the days grow longer and the darkness fades while each of us, in our own way, lights little fires everywhere to proclaim the love of God. At least that's, that's my Christmas wish. <laughs> and as I look out on all of you, I expect it'll come true. And all to the glory of God. Amen.
Friends, this is the Lord's table, and all are welcome here. Those who are uh, joining us online are encouraged to set up a table, if they haven't already, that are in view of the screen, um, and set it with your own elements of bread and juice. In the parking lot, people will be doing the same, and the idea is that we might, in some way, be connected to our experience of sharing the communion in the same way. Some have asked about the consecration of elements and how that works in the Presbyterian Church and how that might work online. We've been doing this for a while now, um, and so most of you know, but in case you're new to this practice, we understand one another to be a part of the priesthood of all believers and that Christ is present in and through us. Just as uh, a loaf of bread or a cup cannot contain the fullness of God, the presence of God, the reality of God, is here in our midst between us. And so as we consecrate and share these elements, we become one with Christ together. Join me in prayer. Gracious God, we give thanks and praise, for you are the creator, redeemer, and sustainer of all that is, was, and will be. We praise you for the sacrificial love of Jesus that formed the church and the presence of the Holy Spirit that guides the church today. We ask this day for your blessing over these gifts of bread and juice, that they may be the very body and blood of Christ. Sanctify us to your will as we share them together, and hear us as we pray in the way of Jesus, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as we gather, we remember how Jesus met with his disciples, with his closest friends for the Passover meal. At the beginning, he took the bread and giving thanks, he broke it, saying, this is my body given for you. Whenever you eat of it, remember me. I encourage you to take the bread that is before you to break it and lift it in remembrance of the proclamation of Christ. To close the meal, he took the cup, pouring it out, he said, this is the new covenant which is sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, remember me. I encourage you to pour out your cup as well in remembrance of the sacrificial love of Christ. As God's people, I encourage you to take the bread, dip it in the cup, remember God's love for you. Taste and see the goodness of God. Having been so joined through Holy Communion, let us join our hearts and minds together once more in prayer. God of peace and providence, we covenant this holy night to love you with fresh devotion. Fill us with your hope, peace, joy, and love as we seek to abide in you with all we say and do. Amen. One of the great traditions of the church is the lighting of candles and singing of Silent Night. Those who are here are going to be welcome to light our candle from the one light which comes from the uh, peace light, the light in Bethlehem. And as we light these candles, we hope that you have a candle that you might light as well and realize that it's not just the physics of one flame to one candle, but it's the 
reality of God's presence that we all experience here together. So I invite you to join me in lighting candles and lifting them up as we sing Silent Night. Friends, while we may extinguish these candles tonight, the light of Christ will continue to burn in our hearts. So tend that flame well, but remember that the source of that light is without end. And we have one another to turn to in times when it seems that our lights have grown dim. So go forward now as keepers of this sacred trust that God loves you, and God loves them too, whoever they are, and be fed by that love, be guided by love,
For love is the way, now and always. Amen. Thank you.